This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Father's Day. Those talentless hacks over at IFAF are getting thousands of views. <laughs> I think it is stupid and uncomfortable and I don't like being naked. That gives me an idea. Let's go bison tipping. Let's not. <laughs> I love my dad. I love my dad so much. <laughs> my bio dad was sort of like a chocoholic, except with rage. IFAF. Idaho Falls infotainment talk show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Coming up on this episode, what's so great that you nom 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 it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Father's Day is on the way. We finally hit Snake Bite Sunday brunch, and the seagulls got theirs. <laughs> oh, for McDonald's, I guess. Mm-hmm. Not really. Well, you know, a little brunch for us, brunch for them. They are seagulls after all. Come on. Water tower progress, why catios are good, why Eminem is still the man, and the INL celebrates their 75th anniversary. Uh, I will end the show with a couple of fun fails, too, if that's a thing. Is that a thing? Oh, uh, yeah, of yeah. course. That's why fail compilations exist. Yeah. And just like that, last Wednesday, June 5th, it's summer in Idaho Falls, baby. About dang time, isn't it? It, it, And my metric for that is when, you know, because I've had my heat on all year up to this point. Oh, yeah. Six months into the year. Uh, June's not over yet. But uh, when I woke up and I I was like, gosh, it's a little warm in here. Checked Mm -hmm. the thermostat and realized it was warmer in the house than the heat was set to. Oh, wow. Flip it to cool, baby. Yeah, about time, huh? Well, and I know there were a couple of really nice temperate days when you didn't have to touch the thing at all. Yeah, and I heard I hardly ever heard the furnace go off. Well, I mean, like you didn't even it like it was net zero. You yeah. didn't the furnace didn't go on, the AC didn't go on, it was perfect. And I know that because my <laughs> usually my intermountain gas bill is a hundred bucks or so. Right. And it was like forty. Yeah, that's nice. For the last billing cycle. Mm-hmm. Love that. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Straight to the follow ups. Yeah, let's do it. I predicted, and that was five months ago, four, six, Mm -hmm. give or take, that um, we'd have some copycatters. And last week we got two, a a radio station and a TV station. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're doing little podcasts now. Funny. Well, and it makes sense. I do think that the future is podcasts. Right. It's, yeah. Okay. I was watching American Dad uh, season 16, episode six today, Mm -hmm. and they were kind of making fun of radio. It was, it was it was bring your dad to class and have him tell what he does his <laughs> career day or whatever. Right. Uh-huh. He's like, hey, kids, I'm a radio engineer. <laughs> That's right, radio. It's like podcasts, except <laughs> instead of uh, playing things on your schedule, we do it on our schedule. Mm-hmm. And, and I thought, yeah, on demand is the future for sure. Oh, absolutely. I personally, I haven't watched television for probably 10 years, maybe more. Okay, I know I have for Super Bowl. Yes. And that's about it. That's it. Um, But I kind of feel bad for kids nowadays because of that. They will I, never know the rush of hearing their sibling yell, it's on, after running to the bathroom. And having to run back, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> From the kitchen, the bathroom. Mm-hmm. They'll never know that thrill. And there was kind of a nice... Um, collective consciousness the following morning at the water cooler at work. Right. Where you could, oh, did you see Game of Thrones last night? Yeah, yeah. And there were only a few options to choose from. So, of course, you could find something to connect with with everyone. Yeah. ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, and PBS. Yeah. (laughs) And then then cable (laughs) exploded. The dark ages. (laughs) Yeah. It kind of was. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you that the idea to do their podcast that they're doing Mm -hmm. either came from the general manager or the talent themselves. And I I also guarantee you that if it came from the talent, the general manager was like, oh, fuck. (laughs) You know, really? Can Mm -hmm. you just do your job instead of having this little side project? Right. And I guarantee you, if the idea came from the general manager, the talent was like, oh, fuck. (laughs) One more damn thing I have to do. I mean, because those those radio people. They're already overworked. Yeah. You know, it of used course. to be um it used to be understood that in order to do okay, take Sean Hannity, for example. We're mm-hmm. not gonna get political, but the guy is a talk show monster. Yeah. Um, he preps an hour for each hour he is on. Mm-hmm. So if he's got a four hour show, he preps for four hours. Yeah. And if you want a good show, You've got to you've got to prepare somewhat. Oh, absolutely. But no one here in Idaho Falls, Idaho, you get a general manager coming in from the sales side going, "Oh, it's 
okay, you do a four hour show, but what about the other four hours? We got to have you taken out the trash and right. calling clients for prizes mm-hmm. and giveaways and, you know, um, using Adobe Illustrator to put together right. something for the website. I mean, it's it kind of, it kind of comes down to, I don't know if I can say this actually. Go ahead. Let's find out. Um, I think it does kind of come down to that a lot of radio stations just aren't bringing in as much money as they were used to, and therefore they have to stretch staff a little thinner. Yeah. I mean, I think now I'm just thinking of one group that I have in mind that, you know, used to have 25 people, now has five people. Wild. Yeah. Just in the last, I don't know, 10 years. It takes a while. And you know, but if newspapers can still be in business. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the, it's all the uh, Reader's Choice Awards and Best of Idaho Falls Awards. They're those money making ventures. Right. It's so funny because those just ended and now they've just started again. So funny. There was like a month breather where I didn't hear anything about them. Well, but you got to admit that the pivot is pretty genius. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. make at the money end of the however day, you can. Right. Exactly. You got to make money somehow. And when the people either can't afford to or no longer want to pay for your service, find someone else to. Well, and I want to say I want everybody to do well and be successful. There's room for everybody. Mm-hmm. I don't subscribe to the scarcity mentality. There's enough to go around for everybody. And I there, completely agree. Yeah. There are some people who do want to hear a guy with an exaggerated Southern accent mm-hmm. completely steamrolling over a blonde giggle box <laughs> with his dad jokes and Southern fried expressions that aren't even expressions. Right. There's room for those people. Totally. And I want to see them succeed. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, everyone saw television roll around and they were like, okay, radio's done. But I mean, video didn't kill the radio star. It just changed the landscape. Yeah. If a GM did tell his talent to do it, it's because those talentless hacks (laughs) over at IFAF are getting thousands of views. (laughs) I want to see that happen. But there's room for everybody. There's room for talentless (laughs) hacks like us. We can say things like this. You remember last week I was talking about going to a Pride Festival once with my kids because I was Uh trying to be a little more of a progressive parent. And they were old enough, I think. Yeah. And all it was was really a bunch of dicks and titties necklaces. Yeah. So Selena, Ohio City Council President Jason King was at a Pride event Mm -hmm. and he was reading out loud signs that he had seen. Roll tape. I love vagina. Nom, 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 nom. Also at this event were vendors present who were selling... In a- While we're at it, should we get that little clip of Zoe Deschanel saying penis from 500 Days of Summer? <laughs> it is summer after all. <laughs> it kind of sounds like the Cookie Monster. Me love vagina. Nom, 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 nom. You know, I think that there are some men who sound that way too. <laughs> um, okay. Well, and I'm so mad because last time when we talked about this, I didn't even think to bring up one of my favorite little festivals that happens in Japan, the Japanese Penis Festival. Okay. Um, otherwise known as Kanemara Matsuri. I'm very good at Japanese. Can yes. you tell I've seen anime? Second language. <laughs> anyway, basically, it's just a celebration of penises. You can get penis popsicles. They have big penis balloons. They've got, like, signs that are shaped like penis. They've got, like, penis beach balls that they, like, bop around to each other and now, stuff. Now, have you seen footy of this event? I like, have. Is it a family? Are there family kids? Family friendly. So there are kids. There are kids eating popsicles. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> this sounds like a bachelorette party gone wild. Right, right. Yeah. But, you know, the more I think about it, the more I think it actually makes so- maybe not a lot of sense, but some sense. At the end of the day, it's just a body part. Right. And we really need to stop hypersexualizing things that much. Well, I you mean, it hypersexualizing is a sexual organ, sexual sure. organs, is that a... Well, but also penises pee. Maybe they, it's they, a urinary organ. They do organ. serve other purposes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they're just so, you know what? Maybe what they're really celebrating with the Japanese Penis Festival, which I know they're not, this is a joke, is that men get to stand up to pee. I'm pretty sure I know of at least one female camper who mm-hmm. has got that little device. It's a, it's, I think it's called a sheep pee. Yeah. It's basically like a, a specialized funnel. It looks like a test tube with a medicine spoon on it and you can measure the milligrams right. of medicine that you take. Man, I remember when I first found one of those as a kid and I thought they were the most fascinating things. I like actually want to take medicine because of them. But anyway, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And you just sort of, I mean, I guess you sort of stick it in and up. Well, I, well okay. Not in. Okay. <laughs> Not like More in, like between? Yes. Okay. You, you peel back the... Right. <laughs> I was embarrassed enough saying vagina. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. 
<laughs> Man, Mike, I thought you were a professional. Are, are you going to start blushing on me? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Am I? Am I looking a little? <laughs> You're looking a little rose, a little rosy. But then you yeah. can simulate the fact that you've got one, right? And, right. Uh, well, and I mean, I know that there are some ladies <laughs> who can just do it. Like there's a certain way of standing and pulling, and it just works. Yeah. Yeah. Rather which, than the squat and squirt. Right. Method. Yeah. Right. Which honestly. I kind of think is probably the better way. Okay, here's the thing, especially with peeing when you camp, all right? I hate camping because I don't like peeing in the woods. I think it is stupid and uncomfortable, and I don't like being naked from the waist down where people might see me. (laughs) Same. (laughs) I I enjoy peeing outdoors every chance I get, you know, once every 10 years. (laughs) (laughs) But... Yeah. Yeah. But the main reason I hate it is because when I was a little kid, my mom taught me how to camp pee and I didn't quite understand what she meant. And I ended up peeing all over my sneakers. Oh, no. And then I had to squish, squash around them, around mm-hmm. them for an hour. And it was the worst. Was there a river or a lake nearby? Uh, there was one nearby, but I don't think that we went to it immediately. Oh, boy. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but now. Like, looking back, I feel like it would be better to just teach a girl to (laughs) go to the bathroom standing up like we were just discussing. Like they do off the back of a trailer bed in Sturgis. Right. Because, I mean, realistically, (laughs) you probably will get some dribble, Uh but I guarantee that won't be enough to wet your shoes. Right. You know? (laughs) You're talking about the lesser of the two evils on the learning curve for the... Yeah. Right. Yeah. P trajectory. Although I guess maybe it does depend on anatomy. So that's Mm -hmm. why, that's why the um, podcasts by the local radio stations and the local TV stations aren't going to move the needle. I'm not saying they're going to fail, but they're just, they just do the stuff that they are already doing on their current medium. Right. Because, you know, television stations have owners and general managers and uh, personalities have, like, morality clauses. Yeah. No talking about penises and vaginas. How dare they? Yeah. <laughs> but if they do want to beat us, here's what they need to do. That is absolutely brilliant. How did they That's not true. think of that already? Like... It's so simple, so elegant. Just and such, it would work. Such it would a work, perfect solution, yes. Okay, so moving <laughs> on with the rest of the follow-ups, our uh, commenters on the internets reminded us of other people that the gays have stolen the rainbow from. Of course, oh. last episode we talked about how they stole it from mm-hmm. God and Rainbow Bright and My Little Pony. Dorothy. Leprechauns. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Dorothy. Kermit Somewhere the, the Frog. Rainbow. Kermit the Frog. Mm-hmm. The Rainbow Connection. Uh, they've also stolen the rainbow from Bifrost. Bifrost. The, uh, that's the bridge that connects Asgard to Midgard in right. Norse mythology. Yes, that's true. The, huh? the realm of the gods and the realm of men. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, they stole the rainbow from RV Windsocks in the 80s. Yes. Remember those? Uh-huh. I mean, I, I've yeah. seen them <laughs> as uh, relics of yeah, the past. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, I know what you mean. Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Oh, Stole the rainbow from them. I'm going to get disowned for forgetting that. Yes. That's not you good. Might. Yeah. <laughs> how how could we not have gotten Skittles? Right. Taste the rainbow. Yeah. The Taste gays. the rainbow, steal the rainbow. <laughs> yeah. Have stolen <laughs> Mario Kart. Yes, Rainbow Road. We just played the other day on your N64. <laughs> we did. We did. Because and you honestly, got the Mario Kart from um, Retro yeah, X. <laughs> I did. Oh, it was so fun. You know what? We really should have done a little insert of that it was fun that was the best um, 15 bucks you've spent in a long time i think it was pretty great yeah. i had a great time rainbow road was by far the most fun of all of the roads oh, yeah. Like, yeah for sure time. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was the best also um lisa frank oh i love Le- how can I we had forget lisa frank so much lisa frank stuff as a kid oh, i'm sure you did i was and subscribed. your caboodles oh yeah I, you know, I didn't have that many caboodles. I think I only had like two. Oh. Yeah. Um, but I was uh, I was actually subscribed to Lisa Frank Magazine as a kid. Wow. I think I only got like three or four of them before my mom ended that because it was probably <laughs> too expensive. But they were, I was like a ravenous dog. I was so excited when I got them. They were just, they were so pretty. They were. <laughs> Last thing that uh, the gays stole the rainbow from, mm. Lucky Charms. Lucky oh, Charms. Oh, right. With the, with the rainbow mm-hmm. over the... How could we forget that? Mm-hmm. And then Kevin, uh, the most interesting man in the world, our man with the hat in Manhattan, <laughs> uh, sent me a little thing saying, hey, did you know that um, magenta 
meaning your favorite color, pink, doesn't actually exist. Right. And I, first of all, I was blown away by that statement. Also, magenta is not my favorite color. But it belongs in, but it's the pink, it contains the pink family. Think about this. In fact, let's look at Carly's shirt from, uh, and and by the way, uh, these are available at tetontshirts.com. Just in time for pride. Yeah. Show your Idaho Falls pride with a little uh, I heart, I F rainbow heart shirt. Mm Mm-hmm. But let's start at the top, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then indigo violet. Right. Where's the pink? That's the thing. You're right. Pink does not exist on an actual rainbow. Yeah. Yeah. It's not on the, it's not Mm -hmm. in the spectrum, meaning color spectrum of a rainbow. Mm -hmm. And I guess our eyes just sort of make it happen. Right. And there's a whole, he sent me a BBC video that's fascinating. We'll link to it on uh here to sort of, if you really want to nerd out and- Mm -hmm. And know why. Yeah. But that blew my mind. I never thought of that before. Right. Well, and I almost feel like magenta is the connect. Like if you turned a rainbow into a tube, magenta would be the connecting color between purple and red. Oh, you just blew my mind again. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Well, and that's the thing too. Magenta is generally a more purple pink combo. Whereas I like a true ballet slipper pink, like a nude pink. The next time I look at a rainbow, I'm going to look and, and split hairs and see if I can see any of that. Oh, yeah. You won't be able to. Wow. It, like, okay. You know the big color uh, wheel that you can find on Windows and you can choose basically any color? Yes. It is so hard to find the exact shade, the exact shade of pink that I want. Now, I think pink really is just watered down red, right? It's yeah. red mixed with white. Yeah. Like if I was painting it, that's exactly what I would do. Yeah. Okay. I might add a tiny touch of maybe like either a purple or a yellow, depending on how, you know, well, like, right, how like peachy you wanted your pink. Yeah. Like right. you were saying. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like if I want it to be more of a candy pink, I'd add a little bit of purple. And if I wanted it to be more of a like a soft pink, I'd add maybe just a tiny, tiny touch of yellow. Kevin also sent me this as a follow up. Uh, Dr. Pepper last week, uh-huh. for the first time ever, I believe, surpassed Pepsi as the number two soft drink in America. Which I think makes all the sense in the world. Another mind blower for me. I completely, well, it blows my mind in the sense that it's wild that it happened, but it's so logical. Is the thing. Right, because it's different. Yes. And I see a lot of the kids drinking the Dr. Pepper. Yeah. My Friday morning coffee friend Mm -hmm. uh, loves the Dr. Pepper. Yeah. One of my best friends loves Dr. Pepper, too. Loves the cream soda one. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good. Not the strawberries and cream one. No, but the cream soda Dr. Pepper is delicious. And I'm not sure he's keen on the creamy coconut, which I don't get, because I I I I almost love that more. Yeah. 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 But Coke still has, like, I think, twice- the market share of its closest competitor, which is now yeah. Dr. Pepper. Which does make sense. Man, I mean, there's one of the foods that built America on Hulu about the Pepsi, Coca-Cola, right. Cola Wars. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I've always liked Coke better. Right. Uh, but I love Pepsi's marketing. Mm-hmm. You know, the choice of a new generation and the <laughs> Pepsi challenge and then the Michael Jackson ads That's where his true. hair caught on fire. Uh, I will say there is one piece of marketing that no one cared for from Pepsi. Oh, the Kendall oh, Jenner. Just so bad. Handing the can. <laughs> Spoofed, by the way, famously in The Boys. Uh-huh. By A-Train, which was hilarious. Which is coming out, episode one of season four, coming out this week. I'm so freaking excited. On Amazon Prime. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> Party. Right? <laughs> Set everything aside. Ooh. Phones on D&D. <gasps> You know what we should do? Yeah, what? We should make a charcuterie board that looks like a exploded body. Because <laughs> that <laughs> so happens much, a lot. <laughs> so much exploded bodies and so much blood splattering on other actors' faces uh-huh, in that yeah. show. You could make the bones out of cheese. <laughs> you know, like a nice white cheese. And then you could do some jelly all over with Mozzarella sticks and marinara. <laughs> oh, there! see, there we go. I'm yeah. so glad you're on board. I can't wait to do that. Can't wait. <laughs> Uh, last follow-up, uh, somebody sent us this, the distracted boyfriend meme that we talked about last week because mm-hmm. Cheech and Chong's choose, cruise shoes are using it. <laughs> and they say that five times fast. It's so hard. In their ads. Uh, but they said, did you see this one with Jack Black? Check this out. Super funny. So you see Jack Black passes a couple and the distracted boyfriend <laughs> 
looks at Jack Black going, is that Jack Black? Right. Yeah. yeah. You can totally tell that's the expression on his face. Yeah. And I would react exactly the same thing. I would too. I love Jack Black. That yeah. man is Di- Dionysus incarnate. Yes. He's amazing. I is love him. Is that the Greek god of revelry and partying? and. Mm-hmm. Who's Pan? Oh, I think Pan is the Roman equivalent of Dionysus. Uh, no, Bacchus is. Bacchus, okay, anyway. Yeah, Pan is the little goat boy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which he could also be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's, just, he's just unabashedly himself. He's, well, he's rock just and roll. Joy. <laughs> yes. You know, he's yeah. just there to have a good time. Yeah. You know? And he and does I it well. that. Peaches, 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 Man, peaches, peaches. And honestly, his, um, his ability... To do anything without it feeling cringe Mm -hmm. is incredible, you know? He lets it all hang out. Yeah. Him and Kyle Gass in uh, Tenacious D. I love how Kyle's always in the background of his stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But like, okay, you know that one uh, clip of him where he's playing the toy saxophone? Yes. And he's just, he's selling it, you know? I can't think of very many other celebrities who could do that bit without it feeling a little cringe. Right. But because it's Jack Black and because he knows how to sell it, it's just magnifique. Isn't that the one that goes? Er, e, er, e, e, yes. E, er, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Oh, wait, I went into a different song. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, anyway, it's just fantastic. Oh, don't forget, Father's Day is this Sunday, June 16th. Yes. Coming up. I have no idea what I'm going to get my dad. I did get him a card, though. You um, did, okay. That might be it. <laughs> Maybe. Because he know has everything. <laughs> one, I know one of the episodes back, we was it Christmas maybe? We uh-huh. talked about what to get the man who has everything. Right. And that is a great list. And I, I think it's um, something to maintain it. Mm-hmm. If he's got a bunch of things, uh, a place to keep it in, mm-hmm. stuff he's going to get anyway. I love my dad. Well, and he's just, he's such a quintessential dad. You know, like he doesn't worry about his... Fashion, you know, he wears the same thing every day. He, I shit you not, has a holster for his cell phone and he's got a holster for his pocket knife. <laughs> uh, we call it his Ed tool because he gets like really fancy ones that have like 50 different uses for him. Well, and he often <laughs> does behind the scenes stuff at the Civic. Right. And so he just wears all black. Yeah, constantly. Or mostly black. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And he can fix anything. You know, anytime I have a problem and I'm like, dad, like, what would I, like, what do I do? I just call my dad and he's like, yeah, it's super easy. Like, I can't believe you don't already know that dumbass. Right. Well, and you've got, (laughs) he doesn't, he doesn't call you a dumbass. No, he doesn't. He's he's actually pretty cool. He's so sweet to you. Yeah. Yeah. He's really good. I love my dad. He's just the best. (laughs) (laughs) And I think you got a little bit of your resourcefulness when it comes to fixing things from him. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, seeing him throw stuff together, I think definitely made me reconsider how things could be used. So I think that helped. But, you know, I definitely recognize that I'm really lucky to have such a good relationship with my dad, especially because we didn't always. You know, I didn't get him when I was a teenager because I was like so deep in my little like sympathy, like my little uh, Debbie Downer hole. Your teen angst. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. It almost happens to almost every teenager. Right, right. But yeah. So, you know, being an adult and like really seeing him as a person I just love him. I love the guy. I think he's just swell. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. But anyway. Swell. That's keen. That's nifty. (laughs) It is. It is. So what's your big plan for Father's Day? Eh, I didn't do so well in the dad department. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Well, let's start with my first mistake. I'm sure it's my fault. I was a uh, save the marriage baby. Ah. Ah, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How dare you be born? I, I, well, I didn't mean to. Right. It was a, it was an accident and Mm -hmm. it's, I've learned it's not a mistake if you learn from it. (laughs) Yeah. Or if you uh, call it a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) My bio dad was sort of like a chocoholic, except with rage. Ooh. uh (laughs) And uh, so my mom got out of that pretty fast Mm -hmm. and, um, and married a uh, guy who was, a chemical engineer. He worked here in Idaho Falls for the DOE, that's the Department of Energy, mm-hmm. like his whole career. Right. Um, and so he was an academic. Uh-huh. Now, my older brother uh, is a rocket scientist, works literally. for Raytheon in Tucson. <laughs> yeah, <Right>. <laughs> literally. And so they got along. You know, he, he mm-hmm. my stepdad understood my older brother, but he didn't understand the, the creative. Right. And it, it just, it, like, okay, if I'm going to unload here... The tale of two dads. So uh, my biological father, I saw twice by the age of, once when I was 12, once when I was 21. Yikes. And both times, you know, he tried to pack in, you know, 
decades of absentee parenting yeah. into as many nuggets of advice. So I didn't really feel mm-hmm. like I got to know him at all. It was just a nonstop barrage of, see, the key here is uh, to do all these things and make sure you... Uh, <sighs> yeah. oh, okay. All right. And like, you got to earn a place in somebody's life to give them advice. Yeah. Right. Or at least you have to have a life that they want to live. Yeah. My stepdad was a uh, conservative. That's why we moved here to Idaho. I think he had a couple of right. choices. Could have gone to San Diego. Oh, yeah. Can't go there because that's where the gays are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They've already stolen the rainbow from God. Yeah. And Pink Floyd and leprechauns and <laughs> Norse mythology, Lucky Charms, uh, Skittles. Okay. <clears throat> but he illegally adopted me. He was so embarrassed to have children without his last name uh-huh. that he, and I guess it's pre, it was pretty easy to do back then. You'd go to the doctor's office, tell them the name you want them, the kid to have, right, and then get a bill, mm-hmm. and then take that to the social security office and say, this is the, this is the kid. Wild. Yeah. So <laughs> I actually didn't know he did that. Well, and also, would that give him parental rights within the courts? No, I don't think so. Because right, I okay. think the courts would, you know. But illegally changed your name at, at least. Right. Right. And so I didn't know, I didn't know my last name wasn't really my last name mm-hmm. until I had paid my taxes for a few years, had a son. Mm-hmm. And, and when wow. I realized that that had happened, uh-huh. I actually was talking to my bio dad about it. And, he, and this was something cool that he did. He's like, I'll pay the 300 bucks for your name change. Oh, that's cool of him. What's not cool is he doesn't remember he did that. Oh, he doesn't remember at being all. cool with it at the time? Right. Oh, and so or now helping he holds me it against out. you? <laughs> so how do I wrap this up real quick? Um, later, years later, uh, he threw another temper tantrum on the phone mm-hmm. with me. And in the space of five minutes, he went from, um, you're not acting like my son, to I don't think you are my son, to you're not my biological son. And my older brother found out about that and was so pissed. He's like, "Hey, um, does your do, are you Ancestry or Twenty Three and Me? Do, does that site have like um, mm-hmm. a raw data dump?" And I said, "Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll send it to you." Right. He compared it with his, and it's a ninety nine point nine percent match. Yeah. So clearly. So so clearly. The man has issues, and we don't really. I don't need that in my life. Or hear me out. Mm. And I think this is the more probable answer to all of this. Maybe neither of you are his kid. <laughs> Maybe your stepdad was in the picture the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a possibility. Everything, anything's possible, <laughs> right? Anything's possible. I mean, yeah. But even though Probably. I was a complete yeah. failure as a son, yeah. I mean, you didn't save the marriage with your tiny, frail, seven-pound <laughs> baby shoulders. What I did do is watch enough TV to see how dads mm-hmm. were at least depicted as behaving toward their children and going, right. oh, I can, that's, that's something I can use. That's right. why I can pick up on that. I really liked the dad from Full House. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, um, and so I, I think I did my best to break the chain, break the cycle, mm-hmm. and, and give my son a good life and be a good dad to him. In fact, he's right. getting married uh, tomorrow. Right. Congratulations, Marine Corps Captain Chase Nelson mm-hmm. and Valerie on your nuptials <laughs> tomorrow, and I will be there. I will, we're going to take a little road trip. It's going to be a good time. And you're coming with me. I love a good wedding. Yeah, it'll be it'll be great. Yeah, it's yeah. always fun. Very proud of my son. He, In fact, he's... Uh, so he graduated... From, uh, let's see, there's there's three military schools that everybody knows, and that's mm-hmm. um, West Point, the, there's the Air Force Academy in Colorado, mm-hmm. and then Annapolis. Yeah, everybody knows those. Every, all, yeah. I, I'm okay. sorry, I don't. If you care about the military at all, I think you do. I just never have. I'm sorry. The, no, that's <laughs> fine. I don't take it personally. But the fourth one is one that nobody ever talks about, but everybody inside the military knows, and that's VMI, mm-hmm. the Virginia Military Institute. Which makes sense, because Virginia is also FBI. Yes. In, yeah. f- in fact, my biological father, as I understand it, we lived in Langley for a minute. Oh, wow. Okay. And I'm sure every kid would love to believe that his dad was in the CIA. Right. Anyway, Chase graduated from VMI. He also graduated uh, from King's College in London. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the, the guy's just a stud. He's a, he calls himself an amateur polymologist. Polymology mm-hmm. is the study of war. Right. 
but he's got like a major in military history. And I mean, I, I don't know. He, like, I was going to say, I wouldn't really call him amateur. <laughs> he's going to be, I guarantee you, he's going to be one of the pundits on CNN after his career. I Like he's on mm-hmm. fast track to be major. So I think I'm an okay dad. I mean, at the very least, I you raised a pretty okay. good son. Yeah. He may be the best. We'll find out. He may, <laughs> my stepdad told me once... Um, and we'll talk about this. If we ever talk about my sister's death, we'll mm-hmm. talk about this. My stepdad said to me once, he, he had a morbid sense of humor uh, from time to time. He said, Mike, it may very well be that you were born into this world to be an organ donor for somebody else. <laughs> yeah. <That's> but <laughs> yeah. He wasn't Was... talking about me specifically. He meant that <laughs> one purpose in life. So it may be that right. my purpose in life was to bring about this son. Right. And, okay. And be a decent dad. I don't know. That's fair. That's fair. If so, Chase, Lord help us all. <laughs> now, if the wedding was going to be here in East Idaho and I was the one planning it, I would have turned desperately probably to <laughs> Autumn and Nick at DIY Wedding and Event Rentals. And see, the perfect thing about that is that you can customize your level of DIY. So if you're like Mike and you want them to just take care of everything, they'll do that. Or if you're someone who has a little bit more of a DIY spirit, then you can go ahead and just get the pieces from them and put it together yourself. Yeah, whether it's an intimate backyard gathering, a charming barn event, or a lavish ballroom affair, they've got an experienced team to turn your dream into a dazzling reality. Call or text 208-403-2040 today. Items are renting fast. That's 208 208- 403-2040. Or find them on Facebook. Mention promo code IFAF to save 15%. A lot of grilling going on this summer, too. Ah, uh, yeah. Just saw this posted by Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company. They have 1.5-pound packages of hamburger for four fifty a pound. Wow. Yeah, that's local amazing quality ground beef at less than you can get at the grocery store. I checked. And they ship to five states outside of Idaho, Utah, Montana, Oregon, Wyoming, and Nevada. They'll even deliver if you want to see Lane and shake his hand and say, thanks for the beef. (laughs) Thanks for not steering me wrong. (laughs) Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company sources local Angus and Angus crossbreeds fed on green Idaho pastures and finished with locally sourced corn and grain for a rich beef flavor. To enjoy on the grill. Find them on Facebook and drop promo code IFAF to save 15%. One of the questions we get asked as realtors is, how's the market? How's the housing market? Is it up? Is it down? Is it okay? Well, there are currently more homes available for sale than there have been at any point since July 2020, which was, you know, four years ago. Mm -hmm. How many homes there are available for sale affects both buyers and sellers. For buyers, climbing inventory is good news and means price increases and competition should begin to slow. And for sellers, more homes for sale could mean having to put in some extra effort to attract buyers and make your home stand out from the pack. So if you need to buy or sell a home, get in touch with us. Email info at ifafpod.com. We'll get you started. Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan are brokered by Keller Williams Realty, East Idaho. Finally got to the Snake Bite Sunday brunch. Boy, that was almost the perfect day, wasn't it? It was a pretty nice one, honestly. It was just so fun. Lots of time with friends and just shenanigans, Mm -hmm. which is my favorite thing ever. First, let's show you the menus. Put a couple shots of the front and back of the menu Mm -hmm. on here. I had the Wagyu steak and eggs. Mm -hmm. Our buddy had the Wagyu breakfast burger. Which was really good, too. that egg on there. Mm -hmm. And you had the smoked salmon eggs benedict. have to get an eggs benny i don't know what it is about them but they're just the perfect brunch food and the potatoes that came with them all you see they loaded those plates up with potatoes well and you know how much i love potatoes Mm -hmm. and man okay i think the standout piece on my dish and this is gonna sound crazy the hollandaise sauce it was so lemony it was a little more lemony and i wonder if they (gasps) made it that way because of the salmon and i wasn't ready for the smoked I didn't know it was a smoked salmon. Oh, right. But didn't that add such a nice little flavor to it? it's right on. See, I dug that. That might be one of my favorite Eggs Bennies in town. Okay. Yeah. And that's saying something Mm because you have that everywhere we go. I really do. Yeah. (laughs) And then, like a couple of school kids, we decided for dessert to go get Grandma McFlurries. (laughs) Right. Before they're all gone. Well, and that's the thing. They had lots of great dessert there, but when we were there, we weren't hungry for dessert. But as soon as we left, we were like, 
we need some dessert. <laughs> mm-hmm. Our dessert stomachs started growling. Mm-hmm. And we got fries to go with them because who doesn't like to mix a little salty, savory mm-hmm. with sweet? Right. And the, the funny thing is we were all stuffed when we left. But there was always that little extra room, uh-huh. that dessert stomach like you mentioned. And man, I the part I loved the most was that we sat in the car and ate them, which really is the perfect way to enjoy fast food. Yes. You yeah. have to. Yeah. You don't want to wait till you get home and the milkshakes no. melted and the burgers and fries are cold. Oh, yeah. Car fries are the best fries. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. still piping hot. Oh, that's just so crispy. And the seagulls enjoyed them too. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the thing. It was a dessert stomach after all, so it only had a little room. But, you know, we had a, we had our fill, which was, like, you know, maybe like 10 fries each. Mm-hmm. And then the seagulls got the rest. And honestly, I think that was the real dessert. It was like dinner and a show. Yeah. Getting to watch those seagulls paddling around with their friends in the yeah. fries. We talked about how much we loved seagulls in the, was it the Mormon cricket episode? Yes. We just think they're cute. Yeah. And they well, have big old fat seagull tummies now. <laughs> they do. And just remember, by the way, that the more seagulls there are, the fewer Mormon crickets there are. That's right. So. Yeah. <laughs> and somebody said, by the way, do we have those in town? And what I hear is they're mostly to the south and to the west of Idaho Falls. Mm-hmm. If you want to see a Mormon cricket swarm, I guess. <laughs> right, right. We're kind of in that sweet spot, you know? Yeah. Where we don't have to deal with that, which good, because, oh, they're too crunchy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Especially when that blade, I don't oh, know if it's a snowplow or whatever, that <laughs> came crunching along to pick him up. Right. If you missed last episode. Oh. I saw a comment, too, saying that the Elks Lodge Sunday brunch menu is legit. Really? So we might have, we've been toying around with the idea of joining... I mean, if there's an elk who wants to uh, sponsor us, sponsor in. us in, yeah, I, we got an application once. Do we still have that around? I don't. I don't, I don't know if we think do. we do. Uh, speaking of food, more ethnic food for us mm-hmm. Idahoans <laughs> coming to Ammon, just east of Mobetas, I guess. Mm-hmm. And somebody made the comment: Is this going to be Asian food row? Because I love Asian food. Because we've got oh, same. We've got I don't know if I don't think tandoori oven counts, but we've got cup pop, and then mm-hmm. we've got. Coming soon, Sumo Japanese Steakhouse and Sushi Bar. So that sounds like another Fuji, Fuji, perhaps. Yeah. And then a Korean barbecue and hot pot. I'm actually really excited for that. I actually did try Korean barbecue back when I visited my cousin in L.A., and it is kind of fun. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like a fondue restaurant, right? <laughs> right, Where right. you cook the meat in the thing. Exactly. I don't know. And, yeah. and Hokkaido is right there. Mm-hmm. I just love the fact that we're getting all this ethnic food here because I think that food in Idaho Falls has been bland for so long. Right, and yeah. And now we've got some flavor up in here. Exactly. Well, and now when your favorite TV character talks about you know some random restaurant in their big metropolitan city... You can have the Idaho Falls equivalent. Yeah, you can say, I've had that. I've <laughs> yeah. had Korean barbecue. Yeah, right? I don't know if I've ever had it. I mean, probably I not. Wait. I feel like it. I feel like it's only really become a big thing in the last like 10 years. Got a few quick rapid fire things for you. Oh, yeah. Here's the pro- let's, Before we show you the progress on the water tower, here's what it looked like last time I went. And here's what it looked like this time. Yeah, how many more layers is that? I don't know. I think it looks like a quarter or a third of the way done, maybe to me, but I'm no, I have no idea mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. So don't listen to me. The Idaho Falls Animal Shelter got a catio. Which is so great, honestly. I love a good catio. Look at that. How cool is that? They got it donated. Mm-hmm. And I know that fresh air is really good for cats in particular. I, oh, well, absolutely. Dogs get it most of the time, right? Because they have to go out. You right, right. Out. But it's also good for cats. They mm-hmm. love the fresh air. They love the sun. Mm-hmm. I mean, I- imagine if you never got to leave the house. You probably don't want that for your pet. Right. And I think that especially in the summer, the just a, a fine equivalent a fine substitute for that is just cracking your windows a oh, little yeah, bit. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And letting them sit on the sill and just breathe that fresh air in. Mm-hmm. So that's really cool. Yeah. You know, just the other day, I so you know how I have that little baby harness for my my big old baby cat? Your, your whiny boy. Oh, he's He's, so he's the squeaky wheel and he gets the grease. <laughs> he does. And he only squeaks because he wants cuddles for food and that's it. Mm-hmm. You know? And so I decided to try one of those baby wraps for him because I saw some chick on TikTok do it and I was like, brilliant. <laughs> um, and back when he was a kitten, I kind of had to too because he would just cry all day. And if I set him down, I couldn't get anything done. He can be very vocal. Yeah. But I wrapped him up in that and took him for a walk and he was so stoked. And he did okay oh he dug it yeah yeah Yeah, i think the most active he got was that he kind of like 
he started more like hunched in, but he kind of poked his head out and looked around when he caught a little sniff of something. Another quick thing, we've been speculating about the Deadpool 3 popcorn buckets Mm -hmm. after the Dune popcorn bucket fiasco. (laughs) Right. And Ryan Reynolds posted this (sighs) this week. Looks like a um, (laughs) Wolverine popcorn bucket. It's got a blow-up doll expression on its face. <laughs> you know, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure that a product with a similar, a similarly expressioned Wolverine has existed. <laughs> you know, you just probably haven't seen it because maybe it was in the section of the store where you have to be 18 plus. The butter <laughs> dripping on the face was uh, yeah, quite the choice. Finishing I- touch. <laughs> I personally feel like they should have gone with more of a squirting motion instead of a drizzling motion. You know, like like if it was in a mustard bottle. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. They, they seem to have a good time making um, tongue-in-cheek homoerotic jokes about each other, mm-hmm. as Ryan Reynolds has been known to do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Also, did you hear Teton Pass was closed twice in two days last week? Right. Once there was a crack in the road. Mm-hmm. It, I saw some photos of it. it. Didn't look good. No, it didn't. And then that mudslide too. And then a mudslide too on a different on a different part of the road. Yeah. So I would just say um, avoid uh, Teton Pass for a minute. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, maybe go somewhere else. <laughs> if it were in West Virginia, there might have been a Mothman sighting beforehand. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Then Ammon Mayor Sean Coletti posted, hey, by the way, there's so many people getting so many Amazon packages these days that it's sort of putting a strain on their trash collection. Really? So he's sort of asking people to recycle and he gives these three reasons. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's talking about getting a recycling can from Western Recycling. Okay. Three benefits. The cost actually cheaper than a second trash can. Two, you would contribute to the worthy cause of recycling. Three, you would relieve some of the wear and tear and cost on city garbage trucks, Mm -hmm. which ultimately will save you in the long run. It's pretty easy to separate the recyclables. Mm -hmm. I checked in. The city of Idaho Falls has 13 different Lincoln Post recycling locations. Right. Where you can take your cardboard and your glass Mm -hmm. and stuff. Which is great. And my whole thing with that is at the end of the day, all they've got to do is make it as easy as possible. Right. You know? Right. I used to just save up uh, my Amazon. Because you know me. I have to break down my cardboard boxes. Of course. Almost the minute I get them. Mm -hmm. And so they they stack nice and flat, like in the garage. Mm -hmm. And I'll either wait to hear about somebody who's moving. Right. And then present them and and be the hero of the day. Boy, do I have a deal for you. (laughs) Or if it gets too, if my pile gets too big, Mm -hmm. I'll just take it to one of the... The one I think I go to the most is Community Park. Right. That that one's a great one. Yeah. And you just put them in the slots and mm-hmm. you're, you're done with them. Yeah. Now, see, that's the thing, though. I never have time to go to a secondary location. You know, and you right. know they say never go to a secondary <laughs> location. Um, but that's like knowing that you can just get a bin that's right outside your house. I think that would be such a game changer for so many people. Yeah. Because I know lots of folks who want to recycle who just don't have the strength or energy or wherewithal to to do it. And again, link in this post, Idaho Falls residents can get a Western Recycling can Mm -hmm. too. Oh, and one other thing I want to mention, Eminem Houdini. Holy cow. Oh, yeah. Guess who's back? Yeah, we rocked out to that a little. Back again. He samples Steve Miller band Abracadabra, mm-hmm. and he brings back his Slim Shady character. The video is off the chain with a bunch of cameos. It's really good. I won't spoil it for you. Yeah. But some pretty funny ones, and and lots of callbacks to his earlier career. Mm-hmm. Now, personally, I tend to kind of hate songs that sample other songs or like, you know, remixes and stuff like that. Cause it feels a lot like a movie sequel. Yeah. It's like, I've already seen this. Stop trying You're to repackage it and else. shove it down my throat. Now I love the callbacks. Right. That's the thing about this. This is like the Shrek two of remixes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it's almost better than the original. It's the perfect sequel uh-huh. to his original song, you know, yeah. and having that extra, um, that extra song sampled in there, I think adds a little layer of freshness without making it too different, you know? So it sort of grounds it in familiarity and kind of gets you ready for all those callbacks. And it's cool to see or to hear that it's a little more up-tempo than the other songs yes. he's calling back to. Now, th- I want you to think about this for just a second. Eminem's first hit, My Name Is, was 1999. 
It is currently 2024. Mm -hmm. Now, this record, it shot to number one in the UK uh, as the debut single from his upcoming album. Right. I don't know how it's done in the US, but that constitutes a number one single in my mind. Oh, yeah. In a 25-year span. So think about this. Madonna's career was 20 years. Mm -hmm. From Like a Virgin in 1982 to Music in 2002. Right. Michael Jackson's career was 16 years, from Don't Stop Till You Get Enough in 1979 to You Are Not Alone in 1995. Right. He was pretty much done by the mid-90s with mm -hmm. all that controversy. Right. So it could be said that Eminem is, has the longest career out of some of those other musicians that we consider huge pop icons. Right. I would I absolutely just think is incredible. Agree. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also, I feel like rap has changed so much as someone who doesn't listen to a, a lot of rap, by the way. And as a white time span, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like rap has changed a lot in that time span. But at the end of the day, going back to the roots like that, I think is sort of the move. And it, I think it's where people are going. You know, it's that pendulum swinging on back. Yeah, exactly. Got to give the guys props. Right. Man, my mom used to love hit that that first album of his mm -hmm. um slim shady she'd play it in the car all the time i was like five years old no idea what he was talking about but i was like this sounds cool <laughs> yeah it's a bop it is a bop They're it bangers. is a bop i couldn't figure out what he was saying because it was so fast oh but, yeah but i was like yeah okay this is a nice little beat <laughs> summer lama duma luma you assuming i'm a human what i gotta do to get it through to you i'm superhuman innovative animator rubber so amazing you say is ricocheting off of me and it'll glue to you okay you love that little talent of yours don't I you <laughs> <laughs> you just want to show off. We talked in an earlier episode, we talked about how I've memorized um, one rap per decade, mm -hmm. <laughs> starting with a well, a hip a hop, a hippie to the hippie to the hip hip hop. You don't stop. <laughs> okay. We won't. Hey, now you could actually cut that. your time in half because you could just uh, memorize this new one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. This will be the, the new one for uh, some something for on the decade, album. Yeah. Will be for this decade. We were wondering what it was mm -hmm. going to be. Of course, it's going to be Eminem. I mean, yeah, probably. If I live to see the release of the album, which I'm sure I will. I just, I'm feeling a bit like a senior citizen because <laughs> this week I purchased my very first seven day pill organizer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I've had one of those for years. Now. Have you? Oh, I love them. I, well, and it's so efficient because, and I just use it for vitamins, but I can mm -hmm. now only ax twist all the, you know, <laughs> What, the what, little twist tops. Cap. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> Off of all my vitamins. Maybe you are a senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> Can't remember the word for cap. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. I got it off of Amazon for eight ninety nine. It's a big one, you know. Like right. You can, you put some fat vitamin D's in there and fish oils. Right. See, I got it because I'm super forgetful. Oh. So there are times when I'll be like, wait a second, did I take it today? And I can check that. And if it's gone, I know I'm good. Yes. Yeah. Having a system like that is good. Mm -hmm. right. That and also, I never remember to take my pills at home. So I have to have them travel size. Okay. So I can shove them in my purse for when I do finally remember to take them, which is usually like midday. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> INL is a senior citizen. I didn't realize they were they're celebrating their 75th anniversary. Man, only 10 years older than Barbie. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't think of any jokes to write, so I asked Chat GP to write jokes for 70 for the 75th anniversary of the INL. All right, let's hear it. Um, it's lit. No, that's just the uranium glowing. <laughs> have a blast. <laughs> or don't <laughs> don't party so hard you have to you have a meltdown huh. and hope the party doesn't end with a bang <laughs> huh. on that note uh, i don't know if you've heard this former inl and argon west workers received 596 million dollars in benefits more may be eligible wow yeah so if you've had if you have a kid with three eyes no <laughs> if you but if you are suffering from radiation exposure there's an event june 21st at the Holiday Inn and Suites, Idaho Falls, that'll provide further guidance on eligibility and benefits. There's a link in post. Look for the one with lots of acronyms. It's like the U E W I N L um, D O L. If if you know, you know. I guess that's a bummer, dude. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. This really is Springfield, isn't it? <laughs> We've had kind of a heavy. We had a couple of. Heavy moments on this episode, but <laughs> yeah. no. I, I guess all I I'm going to say is, do you think my hair would be better up? 
Oh, for what? Get it Springfield. Oh, <laughs> March. March style. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you got to color it. Right. Oh, right. Color. You got to get well, the Roy G. Biv down there. Do I need to, or will that just happen with radiation? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure everything is perfectly safe. We're all fine. I've lived here most of my life. I feel fine. I didn't work with it, the stuff, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, but your stepdad did. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe he got a little extra on you. Maybe. You know, came home, gave you a hug, mm-hmm. poisoned you a little. You know, they, they used <laughs> to have to wear badges back in the day. Mm-hmm. And they would, those badges had a little monitor in them. Or I guess oh, would yeah. react after seeing, after receiving so many nanoparticles of radiation or something. Mm-hmm. And so then, of course, I guess you'd just change it out. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't know what you would do at that point. Yeah, change your it out, go on with your day. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably your, that was probably your um, indicator to hop in the chemical shower. Yeah, maybe Get that's it. down. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's it. So INL, the Idaho National Laboratory, you are IFAF this week. Chris Pie 5, 21 finger gun salute. Pew, pew. And chef's kiss. To you. To uranium. Well, there's no need to change the tone of the show now, so let's end with two stories about dumb people Okay. getting hurt. Oh. (laughs) And the first one, I do feel bad for because it's an 84-year-old woman who got gored by a bison in Yellowstone. You know, even how many times, if you just listen to this show, tourists. Right. And I know we get, in fact, let's put up the map. Here's where people are listening to and downloading the IFAF podcast. Mm Mm-hmm. That all the way across the country, yeah, with a concentration heavily on the west. But if I they mean, would just sense. if they'd listen to this show, <laughs> yeah, okay. I just want to know what was she doing. I don't know. Ooh, is that a little victim blamey? It sounds a little victim blamey. What was she wearing? <laughs> right. But I'll, okay, here's the thing. I want to know if I should blame the victim or not. Right. And (laughs) I don't know know the circumstances and I don't even know her condition. I hope she's okay. I do too. Especially at that age. Yeah. It's just a lot easier to feel not guilty if you know she was doing something dumb and you make fun of her. Like if she was just like back turned, didn't even know it was there and was like, I don't know, looking at pictures of her grandkids and then it came up and attacked her. Then you feel like a jerk for making fun of her, you know? Right. Was it provoked or unprovoked? Right. Right. So here's some tips from the National Park Service. I'm always tired of saying these. (laughs) Okay, so bison season, when you're most likely to get gored, is when the park is open, mid-July to mid-August. Who'd have thunk? Can humans outrun a bison? No. Not a chance. They run at 35 miles an hour. Jeez Louise. How big are bison? 2,000 pounds. Damn big. (laughs) Is it ever safe to approach a bison? No. No. (laughs) <laughs> Especially not if they have a baby. Under what circumstances should humans intervene with wildlife at Yellowstone? Never. None. Okay, I'm glad you got that one right because mm-hmm. you're talking about nature documentaries and how co- sometimes it's sad. Well, I think they're okay to see an thing. animal eat another animal and. I think there are differences. Like you know, if you see a baby bird fall out of a nest, like realistically, you can totally put it back. Mama bird will take it. They won't care. You know, better than a dead baby bird. But yeah, I'm not saying put yourself between the cheetah and the gazelle. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Or the or- orca and the seals. Have right. you seen what the orcas do to a seal that's sort of on an isolated chunk of ice? Oh, I know. They'll all swim mm-hmm. together underneath it and create this wave that tips the ice. The seal oh. slides off. Like an oyster. Yeah. Right, right down your gullet. <laughs> I love seals. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> I love vagina. Nom, 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 nom. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. That was the line. I got it wrong. Okay. Um, what to do if you encounter a bison? Remain calm. Don't walk toward them. Instead, back up. Don't stare them in the eyes. If you happen upon them on a trail, do the same thing. Don't make a big deal of it. They're not bears. You don't need to be yelling. They know you're here. Yeah. Safest distance to observe a bison, 25 yards. That's 75 feet for us Americans. Mm -hmm. And I just want to point out, a domestic cow can easily kill you. They choose not to because we've domesticated them. But really, if you had one that just had a bad attitude, absolutely. Betsy could take you out in a second flat. So you think her wild cousin couldn't? (laughs) Yeah. Incorrect, sir. That gives me an idea. (laughs) Let's go bison tipping. 
Let's not. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's not. <laughs> okay, let's go bison tipping, wherein we go to tourists and tip them off yeah, to not them touch the bison. Them. Get away! <laughs> right? Run for your lives! <laughs> you know, one thing that I think would be really fascinating is if they categorize the people who get attacked by bison by native and non-native to the area. Gotcha. Because I kind of want to see those stats. I'm almost positive most of them are outside of the Pacific Northwest and Rocky Mountain region. You'd think. Don't you think? But also, there are some people who get a little too comfortable here. You know, yeah. like they really think that they're, they're like, oh, well, you know, I've been here my whole life. I can take it on. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and it's like, honey, you are not Steve Irwin. You do not know what you're doing. <laughs> And we'll end our show with another example of extremely poor judgment. This happened in Utah. Mm -hmm. So a couple was getting married. They were transporting some furniture. And one of the articles that they were transporting was a mattress. Of course, got to have somewhere to sleep. And so the dude, Alex, said to his bride-to-be, they were getting married the next day. Oh, no. Lydia. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, He said, hey, honey, why don't you just, you know, lie on top of the mattress? So many reasons. In the back of the truck. Now, just so you know, this story ends with everybody being okay. Mostly okay. Okay. The bride (laughs) had, what, um, chipped teeth and significant road rash. Because as you can imagine, when Alex hit 50 miles an hour going down State Street in Provo. He went that fast? You should never go that fast moving any furniture, let alone furniture holding your wife. <laughs> I wish I could have seen it. Oh my gosh. I, I mean, no, I don't. I don't wish because I actually no, don't do very well awful. with gore. Yeah. But just, I'm sure it happened in an instant. The wind just caught the mattress and yeah. kicked her on up. I'm sure she felt the mattress flutter a little uh. bit as the air collected under it and then. Vroom, oh no. Just, just went flying out of the car. <laughs> but. Uh-huh. So, uh, we won't show you the gory pictures, actually. I was going to show them, but we won't on well, this. There's one where she's cleaned up a little after that, and she doesn't look too bad. And, in fact, it almost happened on one side of her face. Oh, so she's so like, So, they took face. a lot of the pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they took a lot of the pictures from the side, and she looks <laughs> just radiant. Right. Well, it's and just also, gorgeous. Okay. <laughs> just consider how much money they could have saved on things like Photoshop, Band-Aids, hospital bills, um, makeup, scar they, removal in the future for just a pair of what, like $5 tie-downs? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hell, even just some like really sturdy twine. Alex <laughs> learned what tie-downs are that <sighs> day. And this was just last week. See, and that's why fathers are really important. Yes. <laughs> yes, they are. Get your dad some tie-downs for Father's Day. <laughs> He's already got them. <laughs> okay, that's not necessarily true if... You stole his, and now you owe him some. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I think that's how everyone gets their tie-downs, is that they steal them from someone else. <laughs> the story gets a little bit better, though, because this happened on June 5th. June 6th is National Secure Your Load Day. <laughs> so now Alex and Lydia have partnered with the Utah Department of Transportation to make public service announcements for National Secure Your Load Day. <gasps> oh, and that's their anniversary, too. Yeah. Oh, wow. Happy anniversary, honey. Oh, that's such a bummer, I got you some too. tie downs. Man. And can you imagine, like, they spent <laughs> all this money on the wedding, and then the day before. Oh, what a bummer. Poor gal. The good news is they got to use that mattress later that night. So That's um, true. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See... Here's the thing, though. I think that this is even more proof that you should spend the day before your wedding at the spa and nothing else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Only getting like very low key treatments. Nothing crazy. Right. You're you're a princess for 48 to 72 hours before the wedding. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, that's our show. Do us a favor. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's actually a link in this post that will automatically do it for you. Yeah. yeah. Makes it really easy. You've got no excuse, really, at this point. Do that. Uh, Also, if you can go and like, subscribe to our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all the other goodies. Let's show those local media personalities that the internet is winning. Next week, we have free tickets to the Sound Summer Musical, The King and I. Until then, smoochie boochies. Make good choices. (laughs) 